Okay, uh, we are going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to turn things over to Blake Robinson, who is our librarian here. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, today's webinar is the uh, Introduction to Public Health Research, which is start part of the State Library of Florida webinar series. Um, my name is Blake Robinson, and I'm the Florida Collection and Outreach Librarian here at the State Library of Florida. Uh, my responsibilities include outreach to state government employees, um, selecting books and uh, managing our rare Florida Special Collection, and also answering reference questions. So. If you contact the State Library, there's a one in five chance that I'll be one of the librarians who helps you. And uh, just as an aside, the State Library is part of the Division of Library and Information Services, and that's part of the Department of State. And we're down in downtown Tallahassee in the RA Gray Building, about a block away from the Capitol. All right, so today I'm going to give you an overview of our brand new health information portal to help you find the latest health research. Um, I'll be showing you search strategies for two of our major uh, health databases, which is Nursing Reference Center for nurses, and also um, Academic Search Premier, which is great for finding peer-reviewed journal articles. Um, I'll also be talking about some other health resources from the State Library of Florida, and I'll finally leave some time at the end for questions. And uh, I'll be stopping as I go through periodically for questions, so just if you have questions, just hold your questions until that pause, and I'll be happy to answer them. All right, so we are the official library, research library for state government, and we are mandated in statute to help you all out with your information needs, and we go the extra mile when we're helping um, state health employees. Um, you can reach us by phone or by email uh, from 9 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. Um, we uh, also have electronic research databases, like the ones I'll be showing you today. Those are available 24-7. So. If you're working late and you need to get some research done, those are available to you as well. Um, we also offer desk, desktop delivery of books and articles, so if you see a journal article that you're really interested in, we can help you with that. Um, and now I'll be talking about our health information portal, which is library.florida.gov forward slash health. And that's the old URL in that, um, in that uh, slide deck there, but that'll you'll find the new URL and uh, all of the other information I'll be talking about today in our, uh, in our uh, the follow-up and slides and, and, and the recording and so on and so forth. So there's no need to write anything down today because uh, we'll be covering everything for you. So now we're heading to the website, and this is our new health information portal. So this is our new brand new landing page just for state health agencies. And what this does is it makes all of our health-related um, research in one place so it's easier for you, easier for you to use. Um, you can apply for your state library card. Uh, you can order books and articles online. Um, you can use our electronic health databases. And we've got some key health resources that will help you get uh, started. Uh, for those of you who work in epidemiology, um, the Center for Disease Control has some really great resources. And uh, I'll... We will have more information about that in the handout. So um, you'll need a library card to uh, use all of these uh, services, and I'll show you how to apply for that later. But uh, for now, we're going to start with Nursing Reference Center, which is our point of care research, our research database for nurses and other health professionals. And uh, I saw a couple of you asked if there would be free uh, continuing ed credits for this webinar. Um, we won't be issuing any, but um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to get free continuing education units for other things you might be working on. So, and that'll all work with CE Broker, and I'm, I'm going to show you that right now. So um, you would click on Health Research Databases to get there. I've got everything loaded today for convenience's sake. This is our electronic databases page. Um, this has everything from public health to public policy on it, and uh, you can access uh, if you're um, outside of the State Library, which I know most of you are, um, you can log in up here at the top. You'll see a screen uh, that you put in your library card number, and that will let, let the database know that you have the rights and privileges to use uh, the resources that we have just for you all. So we'll go ahead and get to Nursing Reference Center. So this is our main page for Nursing Reference Center. 
So like I said, this is designed for a clinical setting. It's mostly for nurses, but anyone can use it. Um, you can either search for terms in the search box, or you can use the tabs up here to navigate. And uh, I'll show you both ways to do that so that you'll have a good handle on how to use it. We'll go ahead and do a practice search now. Uh, so lately in the news, um, mosquito-borne illnesses have, has, have been in the news, so Zika uh, and everything else. So that's been a hot topic lately, so I'm going to show you how to find all the information you could possibly want on malaria, dengue fever, and, and everything else that's out there. So today we're going to go ahead and type in malaria as a proof of concept. Now you see, as I'm typing, that Nursing Reference Center prompts me for the correct spelling. So I don't know, how, I'm not a health professional like you all, so I don't know how to spell some of these conditions as well as you do. So as a librarian, it's really helpful to me to be able uh, to, to have the database do that for me. So we'll go ahead and click search. So we get about um, 250 results or so for these. Um, there's lots of different kinds of resources that Nursing Reference Center has. It has uh, patient care sheets that you print out for them for, with instructions on how to treat an illness, evidence-based care sheets which um, summarize the latest research on a particular topic, and also continuing education units and, and other things like that. So um, one thing we can do is if we wanted to narrow, if we were looking for a particular kind of resource, we can click on these purple tabs up here at the top. So if we click on care sheets, this is only bringing back the nine uh, care sheets that are that have something to do with malaria. So we're not looking for news articles or anything else, just care sheets. So I'll go ahead and click on the first one, or the second one rather, immunization of the traveling adult. So basically everything in uh, Nursing Reference Center looks something like this. It's the same structure, so if you can find one thing, you can find anything else. Um, in the middle you're going to have a summary of the health issue to tell you about what they know, about the illness or whatever it is they're talking about. There's footnotes with references at the bottom, so if you click on one of those, it'll take you to uh, the reference here at the top, so you can go and track down those uh, journal articles or other resources if you want to. On the left-hand side, um, you can navigate um, among the different uh, parts of the article, and uh, on the right-hand side, excuse me, uh, you can go to related uh, related information, so continuing education units, uh, patient education sheets, drugs that treat malaria, so on and so forth. So it's like following bread, uh, breadcrumbs, so as, as soon as you find uh, one thing, you can find a whole bunch of other things. And I'll show you um, some other ways to find stuff. Um, so we'll go ahead and go back to the home page now. Any questions before I continue? All right, we'll keep going. So I'm not going to explore every single tab today, but I do want to uh, click on a few of them to show you how they work. And we're going to start with the diseases tab. And when you do that, that narrows down uh, just to information about sort of profile sheets, if you will, about diseases. So it's going to focus not so much on, it'll focus on, it, it makes the disease front and center as opposed to a, a different, a related issue, such as domestic violence, for example. Um, so there's two different ways to search for this information. You can either type it in or you can browse A to Z. That's really useful if you have a disease that's hard to spell. So I'm going to go ahead and type in encephalitis. So let's click on the first result, encephalitis in children. So this is what I like to call a special topics page. So it, it talks about um, encephalitis, which you know we already know about, but it talks about encephalitis in a specific uh, population, in this, in this case, kids. So in the same way we have the summary of the, um, you have the etiology of, of the disease, you have treatment goals, you have red flags, and these are all very useful for showing you how to deal with encephalitis if you have a child who has it. And um, just like uh, in the last uh, uh, module, um, we have the contents of the article on the left-hand side and uh, related information on the right-hand side. So it's pretty straightforward. And so once you figure out how to use uh, one type of thing, 
uh, you can use other, other types of resources as well. Let's go back to the home page now. I want to show you a couple more things here. We're going to talk about patient education sheets uh, next. So these are printable handouts that you can show to patients, and they're available in English and Spanish. Uh, it works exactly like the Disease and Conditions tab. So we're going to go ahead and press M, because we're going to browse this time, and go to Malaria. We have quite a bit of options today. It's hard to narrow it down to just one. All right, so it's the same, uh, the same format as before. It gives you a summary of the disease. Um, and this is something that patients can take home with them. Um, unlike some of the other things you'll find in Nursing Reference Center, like the evidence based sheets, these are written in very basic language. It's designed for a regular, a non-nursing professional uh, to use. So it's very basic. It's got diagrams. So it's designed for anybody to be able to read. And uh, if you have a patient who doesn't read English, you can click on Spanish up here at the top and it'll change it all to Spanish automatically. And you can even print it out. So if you click on the print button, not only can you print this out for them, you can, uh, you can put uh, something in the notes field, for example, take two aspirin and call me in the morning. Um, so if you wanted, if there was something that deviated from the, net, from the regular uh, course of treatment, you could put it there so that they knew to do it. So it's a pretty cool feature. Well, let's go back to the home page. So Nursing Reference Center is a great resource for nurses and other medical professionals, and it's great for looking up something quickly if you don't quite know where to start. And it's also great for, for your agency customers. So if you have someone who calls in asking about some kind of public health question, this is a great way to find reliable information to help them with. Um, Let's go ahead and go to continuing education now. Um, this is, these are free uh, continuing education uh, units for nurses and physical therapists. Those are the only uh, clearances that we have worked out right now. And uh, those will transfer over to CE Broker, so you can save a ton of money by doing that. So um, it's a really great resource if you're trying to keep up on your skills and, and save some money. So we're on the continuing education uh, tab. It works the same as the other tabs we've dealt with. Let's click on West Nile, or let's type in West Nile, rather. So we'll click on West Nile virus infection, we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm already logged into my account, but if I weren't, I would have to log in with my own uh, custom account and, and create it from scratch. And I'll tell you more about that in just a moment. And, you need, and you'll need an account in order to make sure that your continuing education gets logged and reported properly. So if you're not um, doing continuing education, you just want to use Nursing Reference Center to do research, that's totally fine too. You don't need to log in or anything. Uh, so let me go back from, to the home page. We'll go ahead and click on, now we'll go back to this one. I apologize for that, folks. Um, it's a little bit different because uh, I had already logged in. So we're on the main page for the West Nile, West Nile virus uh, module. Go ahead and click Accept to know that we're going to go ahead and accept the terms for that. And uh, this first page is going to tell you how the module works. You have the gray tabs up at the top that will help you navigate. And it tells you what you need to know uh, for the module and how, how the exams work and everything like that. We'll click on Click here to continue to the materials. And so this tells you um, what, this is essentially uh, what you need to know in order to pass the test in order to get uh, credit for this module. So it gives you a goal and the objectives and an abstract about, uh, about what you're going to be learning and then a whole bunch of detailed information about uh, West Nile virus or whatever it is that you're working on. Um, so if you want to practice your skills but you're not quite ready to take that final test, up here at the top, you can click Interactive Review, and you can take a simple uh, true-false question uh, test that will test you on your knowledge up to that point. Um, once you're ready for the real deal, you can take a test, the final exam, and uh, you can get credit once you pass this. It's pretty tough. I, I tried. I didn't do very well. 
um, and uh, you, you can't take it until, so you don't want to take it until you're ready, ready because all your attempts count and you'll get locked out for a day after you try three times. So this is to discourage people just trying to, to Christmas tree the test and go through it really quickly and, uh, and without really learning the material. So um, I haven't done very well, but uh, hopefully you all will do better on these tests. Um, I'll show you one last thing that you'll need in order to make sure that everything uh, works out properly. Um, up here, you're going to click on Profile. When you're setting up your account, you're going to go ahead and type in all of this information. Um, so it'll walk you through that. But right now, I just wanted to show you how it works. I've got all my um, information here. It says I'm a librarian, so on and so forth. And uh, one thing that I don't have that you will is if you're a nurse or physical therapist, you'll put your RN or your PT number here. So what that does is it talks to the Board of Nursing or the Board of Physical Therapy to make sure that you're getting the, your free credits and that everything is accounted for properly. So you'll want to make sure that you have that, um, have that working. Um, so that wraps up uh, Nursing Reference Center. Do we have any questions before we continue? All right, great, we'll keep going, excellent. All right, so we're back on the health information portal. We're gonna to go to our databases. And uh, you notice when I click on that, that brings back just uh, databases for health and medicine. Um, so we'll click on Academic Search Premier, which is the other flagship uh, database that you all should be using. Um, so you use Academic Search Premier to find peer-reviewed journal articles. And what these are is these are um, uh, research articles that are vetted by experts in the field for sound science, so to make sure that it's not incorrect or it's bogus or anything like that. And I'll show you how to use that now. And this is great, and this is a great uh, resource to use if you're just getting started on your research. All right, so we'll go ahead and I'll show you some of the different uh, functionalities or, or the features of this database. We're going to start with West Nile in quotes, and Florida. So what this is doing is it's bringing back um, a quote search, and what that means is it's putting West Nile to, uh, together as two words, so not west of the Nile or west from the Nile. It went in that, exact, in that exact order. And and make sure that that phrase, West Nile, and the word Florida, um, th those words have to be in there when you come back, when it, the results come back. So that brings back about 90 results. And uh, so I'll try um, another thing. Um, I'll try West Nile or Florida. That brings back about 240,000 results. So uh, that brings back everything with the phrase West Nile or the word um, Florida. So that's a bit uh, much to really get your teeth into but it's good for getting the scope of, of a topic to figure out how much is out there. The last thing we'll try is not. So this brings back about uh, 4,000 results, and this has everything that includes uh, West Nile, but not the word Florida. So that's nice if you're looking for something that's uh, a bit more specific. And these are called Boolean keywords. You may have heard that term before. That's and or not. Uh, you don't need caps to use them, but they're really powerful in helping you constructing a search. Um, so it's a lot like a Google search, and in fact, Google's uh, search operators derive from libraries in the first place. So that's why it might look similar. You can think of Google as like a car with automatic transmission. You don't have to worry about shifting gears too much, uh, but you don't have as much control. But um, with our databases, it's like having manual transmission, where you have to do a little bit, you have to pay a little bit more attention but you have much more control over what you're getting. And if you're working on a tight deadline, uh, that's a real thing that you want to do. Um, go ahead and click on the second uh, record here. And uh, this will give you um, the authors of the article, the source or the journal. In this case, it's plus one. Uh, the subject terms, which uh, will help you figure out pretty quickly if it's something that you're going to be if it's related to the research that you're doing, and the abstract. Um, the abstract is the holy grail when you're doing research. 
um, what you can do is you can quickly scan the abstract to figure out if it's something that you're interested in. And if it's not, you can save yourself 15 pages of reading. And finally, you can click on the PDF full text. This is exactly like having um, the article in your hand. When it loads, it's going to be just a moment. Well, we've got, a bit of, we've got a lot of people on today, so it's not moving quite as rapidly as usual, but I can assure you that it looks exactly like uh, as if you were holding it in your hand. So I'm not sure uh, what's going on there today. Ah, it's divided into sections. So this is what it looks like. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit different uh, from journal to journal, but uh, this is what it looks like. It's exactly like holding it in your hand. Um, it's pretty cool because you can look at a lot of articles quickly. Um, so reading um, the abstract is a lot like watching the highlights reel for a football game, but reading the PDF is like watching the whole game. So any questions before we continue? All right, we'll keep going. Or rather. So we're going to go back to our search page. Um, we want to use, um, I want to show you how to use uh, limiters. Now we already used these in Nursing Reference Center when we uh, clicked on the purple tabs to, to sort by type of material we were looking at. Um, it works a lot, it works just like that. You can find them on every website, like in, on Amazon, so if you're searching for books or electronics, it'll let you choose, um, uh, it'll let you choose between different categories so that you don't look at everything. Um, the limiters we're going to use are full text, which is just a uh, uh, just full text PDFs that are available online, uh, scholarly or peer reviewed journals uh, that filters out um, that filters out trade journals and things like that. And we're going to go. We're going to do the last three years. So with medical research, you want to stick to about the last five years or so to make sure that the stuff that you're working on is going to be up to date. Um, with policy research or historical policy research, about 10 to 15 years is, is a better date range here on the left-hand side. If you're doing historical research, like stuff from the 60s or 70s, um, you'll want to um, use wider dates still. So every once in a while, um, you'll see a blue icon here instead of this red PDF icon. Uh, yes, Hope, I will share my slides. I'll be glad to. Um, and, and also the recording and handout. Um, so the, um, the blue icon will uh, let you uh, click on it and it will allow, it, it's an article that we don't necessarily have online but we have access to. So if you click on that, um, on that, me on that icon, you'll put in your name and we'll email it right to you. Any other questions before we continue? And before we go on, this is Melissa. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know uh, that these are what you're seeing is not captured in the slides, but it is being captured in the recording. So you guys will get a link to the recording um, along with the other resources in the follow-up message after the session. All right, thanks, Melissa. All right, so we're back on our health information page. Now, to use all this great stuff, you're going to need a state library card, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, you're going to click on Get a State Library Card from our health information portal, and uh, you'll just put in your information. Uh, we'll ask that you put in your work information, uh, so your state, your state email address, your state, uh, your work address, so on, so forth, and uh, you'll receive a 14-digit electronic card number. So we don't send out uh, physical cards, but you will get an electronic card number that will let you uh, get into all the databases and everything else. So you'll need that in order to uh, to use everything. So as soon as you get that email from us, I encourage you to go right away and sign up for that library card. It's really great. Question, are state library cards accepted at local libraries? Dawn, that's a great question. The answer is no. Um, your state library card is something that you get as a, a working for the Department of Health or APD or wherever else you, uh, or other uh, health agencies. So it's just for state employees. If you want a public library card, uh, they, they issue that separately. 
Um, we're more um, research oriented and finding health information and articles and think like that, things like that, whereas your public library is going to have more books uh, on auto repair and uh, cooking and so on and so forth. So it's a bit more, we're a bit more specialized than most libraries you might have used, but we're great in a pinch. All right, so uh, there we've got a few other things I want to work with you on today. Um, we've got some articles and books that aren't available online, but we can order it for you. Um, if you click on article delivery, um, we can send you any article that you find on Google or that you just uh, you want online and you're not um, and you need to find it and you just you don't really want to worry about looking through the databases. Uh, we're happy to send that to you. Um, but you'll need to know what it is you're looking for before you use this. So you put in your work information up at the top, and then um, on the bottom you'll put the information about the article. So the title, the author, the journal it's in, the date. If you have a link from Google or somewhere else, you can put it right in here. And if you, collect, uh, if you select email, we'll send it right to, right to you. And that generally takes about 24 to 48 hours. All right, so that's requesting an article. Um, for those of you who are interested in books, um, you can click on book delivery. Now this lets you order from us or any other library. Um, we will ship you um, any book you're interested in. Um, it takes about a week or so. Um, I'll show you how that works now. We're gonna go ahead and type in microcephaly, which is of course uh, caused by the Zika virus. So this first book, Caring for Kids, has a chapter about microcephaly in it, and Florida Library Navigator is picking that up. Um, and that's the name of the service, that our book ordering service. Uh, so it'll show you which libraries have the book, and all you have to do if you want this book is you click on this blue request item uh, button, and it will make you put in your library card number, and you'll be good to go. It's very easy to use. All right. Just a couple more things before we wrap up today. I want to show you Florida Electronic Library, which is um, offered by our partners in the Bureau of Library Development. Uh, Melissa, who's here with me today, works for them. Go ahead and click on that. This is a free set of health resources and other things like homework help and test prep and so on and so forth that are available free for, Flor for Floridians. Uh, the other things I've showed you today are just for state employees, um, but these are free for your neighbors, your friends, anyone in Florida who's interested, and they're great from homework help. Um, it's also great for serious research, and it's great for your agency customers. So if you have someone calling in who's asking a question that you don't have the time to answer, you send them Florida Electronic Library, and uh, you'll be free to go about your day. Um, we've got some major sources in here that are really good. Um, of course, Health Reference Center Academic uh, helps you find uh, health journal articles. It's just a different uh, alternative to doing that. Um, it works exactly like Academic Search Premiers, um, which we used uh, just a few minutes ago. So if you're familiar with that, you'll be able to use this uh, with no problem. Um, we also have our Merck manuals online. Uh, you all probably know that you can find information on different drugs and what pills look like and uh, other information about the pills themselves. It's a, a really cool resource. And also our nursing and allied health collection, which is some specialized research uh, that's des designed for that population. The last thing I want to show you today, do you, no, actually that is free, Mary. Um, as long as you are in the state of Florida, you can use the Florida Electronic Library. And the question was, do you need a Florida library card to use the electronic library? Yes, thank you, Melissa. Um, the research, the things I showed you before, Nursing Reference Center and Academ Academic Search Premier, those are just for state employees uh, and, and just for you all have access to that by virtue of working for the state of Florida. But Florida Electronic Library is for anyone, but it's not quite as powerful. And let me um, refine that by saying it's anybody in the state of Florida. Um, I believe it uses IP authentication, so if you're outside of the state of Florida, you would have to use your library card to get in. Yeah, 
And if you work across the if you work across the border in Georgia, it might not work quite as well. Or live across the border in Georgia and commute to Florida, it might not work quite as well. Um, the last thing I want to show you is Florida Health Notes. Down here, um, this is one of our historic health publications, and it shows you um, how public health has changed uh, throughout the years. Um, it was published by the State Board of Health from 1892 to 1973, and uh, we've digitized the entire thing. And it's really great for health outreach and exhibits, so if you need a factoid for something that you're working on, you want to compare, for example, what malaria treatment was like 50 years ago in Florida versus today, it's really great for that. So I've got a page loaded up already, and uh, this, this particular um, piece is something I think you all can relate to. It, profi it profiles um, clerks and administrative assistants um, and nurses and sanitarians who worked or something, sort, something like a health inspector, and uh, it talks about um, what their daily what life was like and introduced readers to, uh, to what they did and it tells you all about it. And uh, it's a really cool way to get kind of a, a glimpse back in time and what your, uh, your predecessors were doing and it's just a really fun uh, way, to do, way to look at to do some health research. So if you ever have people who are interested in historic health research or doing health policy, this is a great resource to use as well. Um, these are, this is completely public domain, so it's, you're free to, uh, to copy from it or to borrow from it in any way you like. Um, and uh, it's part of our state publications collection, and uh, we collect historic and, and current publications from state health agencies, so reports that you all do, statistical reports, the Florida Youth Tobacco Sur Survey, we keep all of those, uh, we keep all of those here, that way uh, that people from all over the state can access them and uh, they'll have access to that great research. And uh, you can get to this um, from our health information portal by clicking on government re reports and statistics. And that will bring you back a wide range of health reports that from the state and federal government that we have available online. All right, so that's our health information portal and that's at library.florida.gov slash health. And uh, that's everything I'm, I was planning on covering today. I want to thank you all for attending today. You've been a great audience. I appreciate your questions that you've had. Um, please don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, our contact information is on the slides that we'll be sending out later. And uh, I'm getting those loaded up in just a moment. And uh, so all that information is going to be on the slides. And uh, we'll be sending out the recording, the slides, and uh, the handout as well. And the recording will teach you, will give you a live demonstration of what I've, uh, what I've shown you today so that you'll be able to replicate how to search for things. So it's pretty handy. Well, that about wraps it up, and we've got some time for questions now. This is Melissa. Keep your questions coming. You can put them into the chat panel, or you can raise your hand. So um, let us know if you guys have any questions. Uh, here's one. Are, there, are the interlibrary books returned? Do we ship them back? Megan, that's a great question. Uh, the answer is yes. Um, uh, if you're in the Tallahassee area, you can use inner office mail to, uh, to send them back. And uh, if you are outside of Tallahassee, um, you can use the envelope that the book came in to ship it back. Great. Thanks, Blake. And we're going to stay on for a few minutes to make sure we get all the answers that you, the questions answered that you guys ask. So, um, Again, if you've got places to go and things to do, thank you for being on with us, and we'll see you next time. Uh, here's another question. Um, let me see here. Um, is there a cost to ship the books back? Uh, yes, Deborah. Just uh, the, I can check with a colleague on that exact uh, information, and I can email you back. Um, just the whatever the postage is that it, it came in, um, it, uh, it would be the same to ship it back. Um, it's generally not too expensive. Um, I will check with a colleague and get that exact information for you. That, that's a different department from what I work in. And we've got a question. Can you provide uh, can you provide the website address again, please? We're going to send that stuff out in the follow-up message. I'm not sure which website you're referring to. So. Oh, you must mean the health information portal. Um, I think um, there's a chat box that we have that we can type that in. Um, Melissa is going to type it in. It's library.florida.gov forward slash health. 
This is the only web address you need to remember, by the way. So we've been working pretty hard on these uh, on these different uh, information portals, and we want to make it really easy for you all to use research. Of course, you're quite welcome. Um, I may have missed this, but how, may have missed this. But how do you we sign up for a card again? Did you say there would be a link? Up? or something of that nature sent out to get the card. Yes, that's right. Um, and actually, if you're on library.florida.gov slash health, that the, the health information portal, um, we've actually got, you can actually sign up for it right now if you're in front of your computer. Um, we will be sending that in the next few days as well, though. And you'll see it, yes, and you'll see it um, on the main page. It'll say, get your state library card, and you'll be all set. And this is Melissa. If there's more than one of you guys sitting at a computer together, we absolutely welcome that. We love it when you guys are watching groups. If you could just type into the chat panel and let us know how many of you there are so that we can keep track of our, for our stats.